Good evening. With the Ghana Learning Channel's News in Capsule for Monday, November 22, 2021, I am Kingsley Bryan. Here's a look at some of the top stories we will be covering this evening. We'll tell you first, Dream Realize heads to Lethem. 500 house lots to be distributed during the exercise. Also, Guyana has a fully integrated HydroMet service, the only English-speaking Caribbean country to do so, according to Minister Zulfika. Then, two water supply systems commissioned, residents benefiting from improved water quality. And in news from the region, Grenada, re-elected to UNESCO, joins Haiti and St. Lucia on UNESCO's executive board. And on the international scene, British Columbia to get much needed help as province braces for more rainy conditions this week. And now for the news in detail. The Central Housing and Planning Authority, the CHNPA, distributed some 500 house lots to residents of Lethem, Region 9, doing its Dream Realize housing drive on Monday. The planned distribution exercise saw residents receiving house lots in track CHPA housing scheme in the vicinity of Polk Bridge, Lethem. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Crowell said house lots have been assigned to low, moderate and middle income applicants. Residential, commercial applicants will be allocated subsequently. Minister Crowell relayed that the distribution exercise will see a reduction in the backlog of the applications in Lethem, which currently stands at 925. The exercise, Minister Crowell said, also forms part of CHNPA's National Housing Program. Apart from the allocation exercise, interviews and surveys will also be conducted. Residents will also have an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with Minister Kroll and a minister within the ministry, Suzanne Rodriguez. The government has so far distributed some 9,000 house lots to Guyanese. This brings the administration closer to reaching its target of distributing 10,000 house lots during the first year in office. Meanwhile, Minister of Agriculture Zulfika Mustafa has noted that Guyana is the only English-speaking Caribbean country with a fully integrated hydrometeorological service. He said this while outlining Guyana's current efforts towards building resilience and attaining sustainable development. The minister was at the time addressing the 61st session of the Caribbean Meteorological Council last week. Minister Mosifa said this service serves a crucial role in achieving goals involving the integration of water, weather, and climate services and solutions. He added that Guyana, known as the land of many waters, can easily manage its water resources in the context of the World Meteorological Organization's global framework for climate services the Sustainable Development Goal, and its own Low Carbon Development Strategy, which, among other things, encompass Guyana's water agenda. He said further that Guyana, through the Hydrometeorological Service, along with other government and non-governmental agencies, is committed to accomplishing the integration of weather, climate, and water agendas through national adaptation and resilience policies. Minister Zulfika noted that, open quote, in the specific case of the Hydrometeorological Service and in its role of national regulator, a strategic plan was recently developed with support under the Climate Resilience and Early Warning Systems, CRUISE, and the Caribbean Meteorological Organization. He further added that this strategic plan has allowed Guyana to align the national priorities on weather, water, and climate with the ambitions of the international community as led regionally by the Caribbean Meteorological Organization and internationally by the World Meteorological Organization. And as part of the ongoing quest to achieve 100% access to portable water countrywide by 2025, the Ghana Water Incorporated, GWI, and Ministry of Housing and Water commissioned two water supply systems in one day, on November 20, 2021. The first system to be commissioned was Katunarib. The other saw the people of Pataranao benefiting from an improved system. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, the Honorable Susan Rodriguez, who commissioned the facility, told the Pataranao residents that government is committed to fulfilling its commitment of achieving portable water access for all within its first term in office. She explained that the commission of this and other water systems is just the beginning of plans to advance the water sector in their community and the hinterland region at large. 
Minister Rodriguez assured the community that the work carried out to date were completed with the available resources from the 2021 budget and that government's intention is to advance works to ensure equal access countrywide. The minister also explained that the investment to extend water service connections to each household is more on the hinterland because of their distance from the water system. The project saw an investment of 8.5 million Ghana dollars from the government of Ghana 2021 budget, which allowed approximately 700 residents to access potable water from an expanded water supply system. Executive Director of Hinterland Services, Mr. Ramchand Jaila, explained that the water being supplied to the community is safe for consumption and will allow them easy access for their domestic use as they would no longer have to fetch water. The water supply system was established within the central part of the community, of which approximately 60 houses have been connected to water system along with the school, health facility and teachers' quarters, etc. The water supply system is presently serving approximately 90% of the community. And turn our attention now to the world of sports. Lewis Hamilton put in a faultless drive to win Sunday's inaugural Qatar Grand Prix and cut Max Verstappen's championship lead to just eight points. Verstappen finished about almost 30 seconds behind Hamilton in second, but was impressive in clawing his way back from seventh, having been given a grid penalty after qualifying. The Red Bull driver also took home the bonus point for posting the fastest lap in the closing stages to further limit the damage on what threatened to be a difficult weekend. This year's title race is set to go down to the wire, with just two Grand Prix remaining, this season in Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi. Open quote, it was pretty for its draw. It's pretty lonely at the front, Hamilton told Sky Reporters. Open quote, of course they enjoy those races. We needed those points today, so a really solid job from the team. I can't wait to watch a replay of the race to see what happened behind me. I'm really grateful for these points. It puts us in a good stead for the next two, end of quote. Despite seeing his lead reduced for the second consecutive race, Verstappen was sanguine about the weekend's result. Fernando Alonso took an impressive third, with Alpine making his first podium finish since 2014 when he was driving for Ferrari. The Spaniard was visibly ecstatic with the result, leading him to drop what no one thought could have been said on a live broadcast. And that was extracted and modified from the BBC. And in news from the region. Grenada has been re-elected to serve on the executive board of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, for the term 2021 to 2025. At the 41st session of the General Conference of UNESCO, now on the way in Paris, France, Grenada secured one of the three seats reserved for CARICOM countries within the Latin American and Caribbean group, GRULAC, on the executive board of UNESCO. The two other CARICOM member states elected were Haiti and St. Lucia. As a member of the executive board for the term 2017 to 2021, and in spite of the challenging circumstances due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Grenada, through its permanent delegation to UNESCO, actively contributed to advancing the cause of small islands, developing states, and other priorities of UNESCO's mandate. These priorities include quality and higher education, ocean management and risk prevention, access to science and innovation, building inclusive knowledge societies, the fight against doping in sport, the promotion of the diversity of cultural expression, and the preservation of the natural, tangible and intangible cultural heritage. Grenada has also been an active elected member of several intergovernmental bodies of UNESCO. The uncertainties of the global situation linked to the COVID-19 pandemic have made it imperative for an active and effective presence on the UNESCO Executive Board to further develop and build on achievements for the benefit of UNESCO's priority areas and those of particular significance to Grenada and the wider Caribbean community. UNESCO seeks to build peace through international cooperation in education, the sciences, culture, communication and information. UNESCO's programs contribute to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals defined in Agenda 2030, adopted by the UN General Assembly in 2015. The UNESCO Executive Board is made up of 58 members, each elected for a four-year term. The Executive Board is one of the three constitutional organs of UNESCO, 
together with the General Conference and the Secretariat, and is elected by the General Conference. The Executive Board acts under the authority of the General Conference, examining the program of work for the organization and corresponding budget estimate submitted to it by the Director General. And that story was extracted and modified from Caribbean News Now. And on the international scene, Canada's federal government pledged to help flood-hit British Columbia as the province faces more rain starting Monday. The Canadian Armed Forces are sending more than 500 troops and have 12 aircrafts working to assist in relief efforts for at least the next 30 days. With thousand more troops available if needed. Federal ministers, including Bill Blair, Minister of Emergency Preparedness, and Anita Anand, Minister of National Defense, said in a press conference on Sunday. The government is also waiving the COVID-19 test requirement for re-entry to Canada for people living along the border who cross into the U.S. to get essential supplies such as fuel and food. The measures came as Vancouver, Canada's third largest city, and the surrounding areas are bracing for more rain a week after deadly floods left residents of southwest British Columbia under fuel rationing and travel restrictions. Between 20 to 40 millimeters of rain is expected in the areas of the province Monday and Tuesday, Blair said. Open quote, there is possibility of that water making its way into the affected regions. The ground is quite saturated and right now there is nowhere for it to go, end of quote. The so-called once-in-a-century storm washed away chunks of highways, closed the tracks of Canada's two major railways, and caused at least four deaths after a mudslide. The province, a major conduit to Asian markets and home to one of the busiest ports on the West Coast, is in a state of emergency after the deluge last week. And that story was extracted and modified from CNN. And that's our news broadcast for Monday, November 22, 2021. Please join us for a rebroadcast tomorrow morning. On behalf of myself and technical teams, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned to our regular programming. And remember to observe all the necessary precautionary methods to fight off COVID-19. Please get vaccinated. It's the only known way to fight the virus. Stay safe, everyone.